Now this is one of our, uh, in effect, our newest armour. It's a redevelopment of our 300. inch. Yeah. It's a redevelopment of our 300 series 312. This is what we call the 312S. The difference between this one and the normal 312 is it has an all magnesium arm tube, the same as the series 5. Mm. Whereas the standard 312 has an aluminium arm tube. So this was developed to uh, accompany the 2012 turntable, the newest turntable we do. I don't think the reviewers have caught up with all your changes. No. no. Uh, there will be reviews of the 2012 coming out in the US in stereo file. If it's not already gone to print, it will be in print very soon. Well, I just subscribed to that again. Yeah. I accidentally phoned Jay Gordon Holt once in his home in Pennsylvania and it scared him to death. Do <laughs> you remember him? Yeah, 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 certainly. In the corner there is the area where all the bearings are handled and checked. This here is a measuring device for the, the bearings. So that's how we're able to get the bearings down to uh, four or five microns. Load them properly and all yeah. that? Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Very impressive. Okay. That looks like a 10. That is a model 10. We've got a model 10 running next door. Does so the strobe you. disc come with it? Yes, it does now, yes. Yeah. So these here are Series 5 style brackets. This is after the first plating process. They come up here for a process that we call plunging. That we basically sew size as the top piece here, so that we get a precision fit on the on the pillar. So that's just copper plated. And then we've got over here. We've got some series fours. It's interesting. The series four in the U.S. are black. Yeah. This is the standard finish for the four. Um, the American agents decided around about 10 to 12 years ago that they wanted to launch a new product and uh, so they talked to us about that. Um, we didn't want to change the Series 5 but they wanted a black arm still. So we come to an arrangement to produce the Series 4 in black and call it a 4-5i. Um, that's a unique arm to the US market. Um, it was initially available in silver as well but the 4-5i actually has the damper kit fitted to the side as well and it has a very unusual bronze wire which is very difficult for us to work with. Hmm. Um, a very high resistance wire, strangely enough. Hmm. Um, but they have LC or FC wiring. The American market have this bronze magnum wire. Which it is doesn't a, sound like a good way to go. No. Um, this is per, con per conductor inside the tone arm. The wires we use will be less than an ohm, probably about half an ohm resistance. The bronze wire for Samico is approximately 25 ohms per conductor. That's something you'd want to add with a later yeah. if you yeah. if you could. Yeah, you don't really want that. At this That's stage. like adding capacitors. Yes, yeah, yeah. Not desirable. That could explain some uh, audio reviewers' uh, dislike of that arm, the 45R. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, unfortunately there's not too many turntables in here. As you're probably aware, we've got a few holidays coming yes. up in the next few days. This is a Model 10. Um, with its power supply sitting next door. So, actually running, on, running a different supply at the moment, just for test. Mm -hmm. That's the finish of the platter. And it's a very del delicate surface. Um, you, can, you can touch it with your fingers. If your fingers are greasy, it will mark. Mm. If you touch it with your fingernail, it will mark. Permanently? Permanently. Mm. Yeah. So you need to be very careful with that. It's a very delicate surface. It is, in actual fact, scrolled on a machine. And I don't know whether your camera will pick it up. But if you get it in light, you'll see there's a scroll running across this area, or the raised area of the platter. That was introduced to give a better interface with the record, it was felt because the record is scrolled, why not scroll the surface of the platter to give a better interface? I see it, I yeah. see it. Yeah. So what about 45s? The yeah, that's no problem, that's not for any problem at all. Are those clamped as well? Yeah. Um, I would probably clamp a 45 without the spindle washer, 
the process of putting a record on, on any of our turntables is you first of all you have a, what we call a spindle washer which is about an inch diameter washer that goes on here mm -hmm. and then you put your record on and then you screw the clamp on top of that so the washer accommodates for that raised it raises it raises the record even further than this area this is to re to receive the record label really yes um, and it raises it but it's, it's only millimeters thick probably about one and a half to two millimeters thick mm -hmm. and that will lift the record off of the, the, the surface of the platter the application of the clamp will then deflex the record back down onto the platter surface so any warps in the record are then really eliminated terrific yeah. So that alleviates the, the issue where the arm is has to be thick in the back, yeah. wide in the back, and warped records could be a problem. Yeah, it does. Okay. I knew there was intelligence. There's very little to do when you receive your Model 10. I, I, I can just briefly run over that. You will receive it in this condition, without the platter on, without the drive belt on. So you will have to put the drive belt on should I avoid getting oil from the fingers on the drive belt? If possible, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Dry hands. There will be on the underside of the Model 10 a transit screw in here. Yes. Which you, knew, which you need to remove. Yes. You don't touch any of this. The feet are adjustable to level the turntable. You have to insert this, what we call a stylus guard, mm -hmm. which just pops in there. When I first saw this, I thought. I could hit my stylus on this yeah, and damage no, it. But put the drive belt on, unpack your power supply, plug the power supply in. It's a plug and socket arrangement around here for the power supply to go in here. And that's the turntable done. It's beautiful, even and when put, it's naked. Yeah, and put your the platter on. The platter just, just sits on there. So don't Good. let anybody touch the mat. Yeah. Touch that. Okay. Yeah, don't touch that. That's why we keep these stripe discs on them when they're here. It just protects the surface. Wow, very delicate. I guess there's replacement mats though if you ever wanted one or is that the, not generally the, done? The mat is actually bonded to the surface of the platter. Ooh. Um, and it's this material. This is a piece of raw platter surfacing material. It's called Isodamp. I heard this comes from a place near Chicago. It does, yeah. yeah. Um, I'm not sure if the rumour is true or not, but this is allegedly used in the space race for acoustic lining of the shuttle. Well, there we go. So that's the, that's that. This is um, has a self adhesive backing. It sticks like you wouldn't know. I've never known a, 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 anything that self adhesive stick like this stuff sticks. Hmm. It is just incredibly sticky. I'll take your word for yeah. it. Um, <coughs> We then apply that to the platter under a press, um, and it's left on the press for about an hour. Wow! And we take it back off of the press, and then the whole platter of this fitted is then taken back to the workshops, placed on a lathe in this orientation, and has the scroll put on it. Uh, Fascinating. So it's almost like buying the. Uh, turntable equivalent of a Rolex watch because they take about a year to build one of these yeah. Rolex watches yeah. I'm told yeah. well, they, 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 I mean, they, a lot of people often refer to the, to the our turntables as the Rolexes or the Leica cameras so, I think yeah. that's appropriate yeah, yeah. no factory outlet store no certainly not 